Hi there everybody, Peter of England here bringing you a uh, video towards the end of January, um, approximately now 10 days since Donald Trump officially left office and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and the Democratic Party finally took total control of both the Congress and the Senate in the United States. So, this video is going to be a bit of a, a, a chest-beating exercise. Um, I'm going to probably entitle it something like The Emperor's Clothes. Um, for all of those of uh, you who know about the, uh, the children's fairy tale about The Emperor's Clothes, um, fine. For those of you who don't, um, there was an emperor and he wanted to have the finest suit of clothes possibly uh, imaginable. And so an offer was made to all the kingdom for whoever could produce the most finest uh, suit of clothes for the emperor uh, would win the prize. So many came, many came, many were tried, he wasn't happy. And then one day somebody came along and in effect presented him or told him he had the finest suit of clothes imaginable put on him. In fact, where he had nothing. So on the uh, day of the announcement, the king walks through the streets, stark, bollock, naked, as we would say in the United Kingdom or in England. And all the crowd applaud and everybody goes along with the lie. Everybody goes along with the lie that the king is actually wearing a suit of clothes when in fact he's got nothing on his head, uh, nothing on at all apart from his crown. Until one little boy comes along and says, the emperor's not wearing any clothes. Now from that moment, the bubble burst, and the crowd do then join in and begin to laugh and ridicule the king for him being so stupid as to have gone with the idea that somebody could produce such a set of clothes. And that's really the situation we're in post 20th of January 2021. Now that Biden and Kamala Harris and the Democratic uh, assassination team are firmly ensconced now in uh, the White House. Now, of course, there are people out there, there are commentators out there that would have you believe otherwise. And these commentators, people like, uh, I think, Charlie Ward, Simon Parks, Sasha Stone... Uh, I'm not sure about the, uh, the chap who runs the In Pursuit of Truth uh, YouTube channel, which was taken down, as many of these channels were taken down. Uh, they're all of the uh, opinion that Donald Trump is going to be coming back, uh, and that around March the 4th, Donald Trump is going to be sworn in as the uh, 19th president uh, of the, uh, the 1876 republic. Um, and we're all going to go uh, happily down the road into a brave new future. However, that's not the way I see it. So why I'm making this video is that I, in effect, was a supporter of Trump, and I was an open supporter of the QAnon uh, initiative, uh, and I could find no fault with it whatsoever initially. However, after the election in 2016, uh, sorry, as he took presidency officially in 2017, uh, it became increasingly clear as time went on that something wasn't quite right. And I, probably like you, many Q supporters, many people who were in favour of Donald Trump, uh, sort of held their breath, they expected the best was yet to come, and so they followed along with the, the always jam tomorrow promise that was typical of the Q plan and nothing can stop what is coming uh, type of scenario that was, that was outlined. Uh, and that was all very, very, very strange. And so from the very beginning, um, some of us, you possibly included, uh, began to smell a rat. Now, one of the people who never got behind the movement, and uh, I always take my hat off to my very good friend uh, here in the United Kingdom, David Icke, he basically came out from the very beginning and said, this is just oppo sayings, the same old story, the same old uh, left-hand, right-hand, blue-red um, game that's being uh, played. However, what he did do is uh, he probably had the decency to sit on the sideline for around four years, until he recently came out and he openly declared 
that he thought the QAnon movement and Trump's entire initiative was nothing more than a PSYOP. Now, I would go along with that estimation now, um, but the caveat in this is that I hope sincerely that I get proved to be wrong, because uh, I hold myself out as being someone who's fairly discerning, I hold myself out as being someone that looks at the, the, the story behind the story. And one of the things that endeared me to Donald Trump is that he initially came uh, into the presidency saying that he was going to do this and he was going to do that. Now one of the major things that he said, even on the presidential debates before um, he entered office, that he was going to lock Hillary up. As soon as he came into power, that's what needed to to be done. And in 2016 at the Al Smith Memorial, Memorial Dinner that is a dinner um, hosted by a memorial association um, in New York and the elite of the elite are all gathered there um, he basically made these statements that in effect this is if he won the presidency this is what Hillary Clinton deserved to have done to her. Um, and then on his um, his uh, um, campaign trails, once he was in uh, presidential office, he would often have the crowd shouting out, as far as Hillary Clinton was concerned, lock her up, lock her up. However, Trump uh, actually dismissed that and gave it a sort of a brush off aside, and he quote stated, nah, that worked before the elections, but it's no good after. So, Things and comments like that were initially very worrying, but what we do is we always err on the side of hope that at last someone was coming along to do a good job. But on his acceptance speech on the night when Hillary conceded the election, he actually came out and said, we have to thank Se Secretary Clinton for all her outstanding work, um, uh, that her and her family, etc., etc., so you wonder, <clears throat> is it a game? Are we being played? What is actually going on? Now, with the duration of the four years that Trump has been, was in office, let's look at some of the things that he said he would do, uh, and in fact that he, he didn't. Um, I mentioned this in the previous video, if you care to look on the channel, just go back to the videos I made in October, just before the, the, um, the election. Uh, in the United States. Um, he didn't do anything at all on what's called the Disclosure Project. He didn't mention anything about extraterrestrial in, in, uh, interactions with the, the government uh, of the world, or the United States government, or the United States military. The best he could come along and do is put something together called Space Force, uh, which we've still got not much idea apart from what Yellowstone uh, Wolf says, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Jake Angeli, um, who's supposed to be the, um, the bison horns or viking horns individual who became very, very popular as of the January 6th so-called invasion of the White House, who's basically coming along and saying he works for military intelligence and the next stage of the QAnon a movement is about to be unleashed. But then we have people like Lindsey Graham, coming along and saying, no, 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 we don't want such an individual testifying at the Senate hearings for the second impeachment of our dear friend Donald. So, it's all a merry-go-round, it seems, and the, the people are slapping themselves on the back, commending us all, um, or commending themselves, on another job well done. And what is that job that is well done? Well, it's running down the clock. And that's, in effect, what these politicians are brought in to do is to stall the people, put them into a state of total procrastination and doubt and uncertainty as the agenda unfurls under their feet with them not even noticing. So, Trump, there was no disclosure, no talk about what happens or happened in Area 51. Not much discussion about Space Force, not any discussion about what Elon Musk is up to with his various companies like Neuralink, um, the big boring company, and with, the, with SpaceX. No talk about really the story behind 9-11, uh, 
the Bin Laden family, Princess Diana, uh, the Clintons and the Bushes' involvement in various, um, should we say, uh, unsavoury acts that have been committed over the, over the years. So in effect what they did is they ran down the clock. So if we look at the two-term presidency of Clinton, the two-term presidency of Bush, the two-term presidency of Obama, and then the almost unbelievable, only ask yourself why, one-term presidency of Donald Trump, we've got a total of 28 years of running down the clock. Within effect, the new world order, Zionist, Khazarian, Cabal, in place, doing that which they want to do, unbeknownst to you, and with Trump coming in as a one-term president, we should have suspected in 2018, when the midterms were such a disappointment for everyone, we should have then even asked ourselves, why no investigation? Why no public inquiry then, Donald Trump, into the theft of the midterm election? So, a presidency that started off with an almost overwhelming majority uh, of, of votes in the United States, within two years, with him making no mistakes at that point virtually at all, uh, as concerning the war or with the economy or anything else that they could throw at him, um, we find that the Congress gets overturned and we then have nothing but problems for the next two years. From that point on, it was all treading water, going nowhere fast. So, it seems like we have been duped. We have been pulled into a vortex of deceit. And what's happened is that what the QAnon movement and Trump supposedly as Q plus or Q plus one uh, were, were doing to the people was in effect... You could have the analogy as rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Q announced a lot of truths. It tried, or did, in effect, whoever this Q phenomenon is, which to my mind is not one individual, but it is a composite of an AI uh, system that was putting together um, info drops or crumbs that were being dropped to the public and the digital warriors to actually start digging. But why were they doing this? They were doing it because it didn't really make any difference anymore. So, if they're going to do what they're going to do, and Q keeps coming along and saying, nothing can stop what is coming, but the news there is going to be eventually, no, nothing can stop what's coming because it's going to be the same democratic agenda as before, I things will just keep running as before, the paedophilia, the Satanism, the, uh, the cronyism, the backhanders, and the biggest one of all is the fact that there is no uh, um, China, Chinese Communist Party as such, or the People's Republic uh, of China uh, organization. It is just one global organization. So it isn't the Chinese or the Russians or the anyone else's, Ukrainians or Estonians or whoever, against whoever, us, it's a one world globalist agenda. That's the thing. And so, you can't say Dianne Feinstein or uh, Chuck Schumer or Mitch McConnell or any of these people are in the hands of or having their pockets lined by the Chinese Communist Party because it's the same money flow going around the planet, it's the same noses in the same trough, whether you're in the United Kingdom, whether you're in Canada with Trudeau, whether you're in Australia, New Zealand, or Holland, Germany with Merkel, or wherever you go. So, that was the deal. So, a question also that should have been underlined is, how could Trump make so many fuck-ups with the people that he chose for these positions? Yeah? He put in, uh, for example, John Bolton. He put in uh, Bill Barr. He put McMaster in. He put Steve Bannon in. He put a load of people in that were inherently not uh, favorably uh, 
predisposed, uh, predisposed towards him. So what was going on there? Um, and in the end, it all becomes, it all comes down to people uh, reassuring us, like Charlie Ward and Simon Parks, getting 800,000 views over a couple of days, uh, stating the same things as people like General Flynn and Steve Pachinik, who's on Alex Jones' show quite often, and maybe never again if he gets his bet wrong. And what they're all saying is, um, Trump is now going to do that, out of office, sorry, that which he failed to do in office. And I find it implausible, and I find it almost incredible that that could still be an agenda on the table. We have been duped, and I don't mind coming along and saying, at this point in time, it looks like we've all been duped. So, why I mentioned the Emperor's Clothes, a child's fairy tale, at the beginning, it seems that none of the pundits are prepared to come along and say, look, we've been taken in, we've been done, we've been diddled, there was a psyop going on here, it was very credible, it sounded like it could be pulled off, and... Trump was one of the people that was appointed to do it. Now, as I say, I hope, I hope, I hope this is one of the videos that's going to, uh, um, either I'm going to take it down because I think to myself, oh, I got it so wrong. Uh, but why I'm doing it is it needs to be said and more and more people have to come forward now and look at the fact that it is very easy for us to be duped by well-meaning, well-intentioned narratives by wolves in sheep's clothing. It happened before, it's happened throughout history, it happened in Atlantis in the final days before Atlantis got taken down, and this is something that we seem to be suckers for. The cavalry coming in at the last moment and rescuing us. Rescuing us. So there are a load of discrepancies, a load of things that aren't true that we've been told and we've been falsely led to believe were going to happen. So, where do we really go from, from here? Um, one of the most disconcerting things is that since just before the election, I think it was sometime towards the end of October, Q only made, I think, four posts after post 4949. And if you want to look at those letters, if you want to take the fourth letter of the alphabet and pair it with the ninth letter of the alphabet, and then if you want to do the same again, um, you come up with a, a word. What is that word? Is there any coincidence that after that, the only posts that came were a picture of a flag, the other was a song, uh, and another, I think, post, Are You Ready to Save America? And then I think the other one was just the word Durham. So, what happened to the arrests? What happened to the thousands of, of arrests that were promised? What happened to? And so I find it quite remarkable that all of these things were promised and the only thing that we are told by certain circles now are that, yes, the likes of Pelosi, the likes of um, Feinstein, Schumer, uh, Obama have either been cloned, they're in doubles, they've been arrested, uh, they're in Guantanamo, and it doesn't really ring too true. So, what we have now is Donald Trump um, has disappeared. Uh, he hasn't conceded the election, but he's gone off to wherever he's gone off. And I find it almost unimaginable now, or unimaginable now, that we could believe that he could pull off out of office that which he couldn't pull off whilst in office on the basis that we had close to 30,000 military in Washington, D.C., in the Capitol, at the time of the so-called Biden inauguration. And it leads me to believe that they were there for one thing, and one thing only, really, to ensure that Trump left the White House. And really, that's what happened. So... We've got uh, Donald Trump now forming a new political party. It's called the Patriot Party, I believe. But it's very similar to what a possible companion and Jesuit friend also did for him, or did the same, uh, when he left 
um, and accomplished so much of his, his uh, desired political objective, and that was Nigel Farage. Nigel Farage formed another party, I think it was called the Reform Party, and now what he does, he acts as a political pundit, um, carrying on in the background in the United Kingdom, uh, having split the United Kingdom down the middle between those who wanted to stay in uh, the European Union and those who wanted to quit. The very same similar thing that Donald Trump managed to do when he polarised um, the United States between those who wanted support to support him and to have change, real meaningful change, and those who didn't. So we find that the opposition is no opposition anymore. We find that the GOP, the Republican Party, have all got their noses in the same troughs as the Democratic Party, and this is why there are no calls really for, for much change. Everyone's keeping their head down, taking their, their dollar from Google and the big... Um, uh, and the big tech companies, and we're now going into a sanitized version of, of hell. Um, the purpose, possibly, of the Q movement was, in effect, to polarize the populations, to highlight and what's called tall poppy syndrome, the people who are supporters of, of Trump and this Q movement, um, only so that they are now more easily identifiable more locatable and are uh, much more easy uh, to vilify and to target than they were before. So, mission accomplished. Um, so, this therefore is a final roundup. Is I would say what we've got to take away from this is that if there's anything that we need to do, the people need to do it themselves. They need to come together, they need to shake off this, this uh, COVID uh, pandemic nonsense that's going still circulating nearly one year after its, its, its commencement in Wuhan. My next video is going to cover that uh, on various parts of, um, should we say, the truth behind the agenda, which I've referred to before, is an extraterrestrial agenda. And so on that note, I'm going to wrap up this video now. And I'm going to say the next video will cover the things that I believe uh, Donald Trump and his family uh, are aware of, partly why they introduced Space Force, partly why the Navy have just re recently released uh, three major patents uh, on, um, on, should we say, uh, free energy devices and um, um, a, a, a cooling device which allows... Uh, great temperatures to be run at room temperature, uh, so to speak, or higher temperatures to function without supercooling. Um, and I'm going to touch on, uh, on that because we need to start gathering momentum going forward now without relying on the politicians because these are the people who've got us into, the, into trouble and it shows now you can't really rely on anyone other than yourself or your nearest and dearest. So that's where I want to take this. Uh, um, Please press the subscribe and the like. I'm putting some links in at the bottom. Follow those. And Peter of England saying thank you.